Hey, what's up, guys? It's Nick White here. I do tech and coding stuff on Twitch and YouTube. Same intro as always. Uh, I do all the lead code hackering problems. There's playlists on my channel. Um, I'm just still going through the center review preparation kit. All the easy problems. Super, they're really easy on hackering. I think lead code's a lot harder. Um, so here's this one's called minimum absolute difference in the array. We probably did a similar version of this already. Uh, we're just given an array of integers. Um, it's not sorted, and we define the absolute difference between any two elements of a and i of uh, a of i and a of j, where i and j are not equal, so different elements in the array, uh, to be the absolute value of a of i minus a of j. So they tell you how to get the absolute value. You just sub do math.abs, and you um, subtract the one element from the other element, um, and they have to be different. So we're going to keep track of the minimum absolute value and what it is is given an array of integers, print the minimum absolute value between two elements of the array. For example, if we have this array, so we have all these different elements, it gives a sorted example here, but down here it's not sorted, which is, you know, makes it a little more challenging. Not really, though. We create three pairs of numbers, so there's different numbers, and then it gives an example there. Uh, create the minimum absolute. So we're going to have this thing called min absolute value. And we're going to, here's the constraints, too. I didn't even look at these. Uh, two is less than n. Uh, first line n is an integer representing the length of the array, so there can be a lot of elements, obviously. And then the value can be very big. Okay, so the value is very big. So we're just going to set the minimum absolute value um, initially. I always like to, s unless the constraints say otherwise, if the constraints are this big, I just like to set them. If there's a max value we're looking for, uh, I like to set it to the min value. And if there's a min value, I like to set it to the max. So min absolute difference. Um, we will set to integer dot max value, right? Because there's the max value that we could, the max difference that we could possibly have is very large. So we'll just set it to integer dot max value. If it was 10 or something, if the max value difference could be like 10 or something, then we would just obviously set it to 10 or whatever, but um, it's super large. So, okay. So what? how do we do this, right? Because the array isn't sorted. So, if we want it, we if we want the min difference here, it's going to be between three and zero, right? And it's going to be three. But if we just had a for loop, and we were comparing elements next to each other, we would never be able to compare these, right? So what we would have to do is we'd have to do a double for loop where one we have a pointer at, you know, j would loop through all of these when we're comparing with three. With three, I would be set to three, and then J would compare every element with three, and but that would be O of n squared, so that's kind of crap. Um, the the best way to do it is to just sort these numbers, because if we sort them, then it would we wouldn't be comparing when we loop through in a single linear for loop. We wouldn't be comparing three and negative seven, and then negative seven and zero. We would be comparing zero and then three, which would give us the answer, and then three and negative seven. So if you just sort. Sorting is going to all immediately give us the minimum absolute difference because sorting is going to put the elements that are closest to each other next to each other. Sorting basically helps us find this like really quickly. So um, hopefully I did an okay job at explaining all of that. So basically once you sort, so we could just do, you set the minimum difference to integer.max value. Then we use arrays.sort of array. So that sorts the array using an n log n, log n um, you know, algorithm there. And then um, all we have to do now is just do a one more for loop, right? So we just loop through the array. Uh, well, i is less than array.length. Um, and you have to do minus one, obviously. Uh, because we're going to be doing that comparison. So we just do, I'm pretty sure we already did this problem. We calculate the current absolute difference um, by taking math.abs of array of i minus array of i plus one. They tell you how to do this in the top up there. And we already know all we have to do is now is reset the min absolute difference to math.min of the current math absolute difference value and the minimum absolute difference value. So we get a current absolute difference each time between, because we have the sorted array between two elements as we go through the entire array. And then we just, t whenever we, ha we have our current minimum, 
and then we just compare the current one with the minimum one that we already have and then at the end we will have the minimum one because we went through every pair of elements they're all sorted so they're all right next to each other they're already at the closest possible values and then um we just return the minimum absolute difference and then that's it i mean that was an easy problem i probably over explained it in like you know, we already did it in a lead code problem, so I felt like that was a bad explanation anyway. Just a bad video, kind of. I drank a lot of coffee, so I'm in like a weird headspace. There we go. All right, makes perfect sense. Um, just remember, sort it, sort it so that the elements that are closest in value difference will be next to each other. Um, that's how sorting works, and then the minimum absolute difference can be calculated in a linear sweep through the sorted array because the close, the elements that are closest in value difference will be right next to each other. You calculate the absolute value of the value difference and then you just update that minimum value as we go through. We return the minimum value at the end. It'll be perfect. That's it there. That was a better explanation. Let me know what you guys think. Please check out the other videos and thank you for watching. See you guys next time.